Hey, what's going on? So today we're going to be playing some Gruel Aggro. I think the main draw to playing this deck at the moment is that it's probably the best Amber Cleave deck in the format. We used to have Mono Red and the uh, Rakdos Aggro decks that were maybe better Amber Cleave decks in the previous format. So they kind of pushed Gruel Aggro aside for a bit. But this deck's actually seeing quite a lot of success recently in a couple of online competitions and a recent qualifier. Gruel's uh yeah, been a bit of an underdog that's come through and won a lot of matches. There's nothing too different or crazy to it. I think it's just really strong because of the amount of hasty creatures in here. In a format filled with Teferi and board wipes and whatnot, haste is just a really strong keyword. There's one notable omission from my list and that's the Robber of the Rich, but that's because I really want to play Gem Razor and I hate having a Robber of the Rich out as your turn 2 play. And then you want a gem razor on turn three and you can't because rubber of the rich is a human so yeah i've opted to not play the rubber of the rich and instead play four zertar goblins three galia and three paradise druid got pearl collectors at one drop pretty obvious stuff most of the deck's pretty pretty standard legion war bus in the main board is something that's uh a bit more common these days just because of the way the format's shaped out Usually you'd find this guy on the sideboard, but yeah, still four Bone Crushers and four Grill Spellbreakers, same as the deck always was. And then the Gem Razor doubles as a three drop and a four drop, so that's nice. It gives you two modes, same with the Shifting Ceratops. You can play it on turn four if you have to, but you want to be playing it on turn five mainly to give it that haste. So it's nice that those two cards give you two separate modes. And Questing Beast, just obvious. Big old questing beast, I love this guy. And then the one of Vivian. Since we have so many creatures in the deck, 32 creatures, you're gonna get a lot of value out of the Vivian. Some of these gruel lists aren't playing the Vivian, but it's a new card and I think it really performs here depending on the matchup, so I, I wanna just run the one. You don't wanna have too many because it's a legendary and as I said, the Shifting Ceratops is also a five drop. We don't want too many five drops. And then Embercleave. One of the uh, best cards in Standard, I guess, and since this is maybe the best Embercleave deck in, in uh, Standard at the moment, I think it's a really good reason to play to play the deck. Embercleave, just an insanely powerful card. Obviously, if your opponent has a Teferi on the board, Embercleave, you can't get down at instant speed, so that's why having all these hasty threats to remove the Teferis is really important, so then you can Embercleave, no worries. Just a simple mana base here, just one more green source than red, just because we have that Pelt Collector on turn one, so we've got 14 untapped green sources to reliably hit that Pelt Collector. But then we've got to have a lot of red too to get the double red for the Ember Cleaves, so 14 red sources, 15 green sources, and I think that's pretty good. You don't want to be playing too many tap lands, so I've only got the one temple. And then we'll go to the sideboard because I'm going to be playing best of three here. Red cap melee. Any decks running red, just got one of them to bring in. Scorching Dragonfire, great card in the format because of Exiles. Cindervine's more artifact and enchantment removal, so we'll bring this in against uh, Yorion, Luca Fires and whatnot. We'll bring it in against Team of Reclamation. It's great against Team of Reclamation because it pings for one every time they cast a non-creature spell as well, and then you can blow up the Wilderness Reclamation. Ambush is a four of. There's a lot of matchups you want to bring this in. It's a great removal spell and it buffs you guys up as well. So you could argue to main deck it even, but sometimes it's a dead card. So four in the sideboard. One more Legion War boss to bring in when needed. Kothos has some graveyard hate and it's also a giant indestructible creature in certain matchups. Like if you're versing a more mid-range deck where you think you're, you're going to be stalled out a bit more, but they're not playing board wipes, so you think you can reliably get to that seven devotion, then Clothus is a good choice, I think. And then two more shifting Ceratops for anyone playing blue, pretty much, we'll bring that in. And yeah, that's the deck. If you enjoy, please like and subscribe. Now let's jump into some best of three and see how we go. Yeah, I'm really liking this deck. I think it's a great one to just rank up really fast. You're not gonna win every game, but the ones you do win are quite quick. This is a nice little curve here. Obviously, Pelt Collector turn one would have been nice, but that's fine, that's fine. And I think that's the main strength of this deck is just curving out with big hasty threats every turn. Old school gruel monsters, pretty much. Breeding pool for our opponent. 
second Zerta. Not the best draw, not the worst, depending on what they're playing. Castle Ventress there. No companion to me, probably signals team of reclamation, but we'll see. Now do I want to haste this in? Growth Spiral, we're going to see a red land, or... Oh, okay, there's Sultai. Okay, so I'm going to haste it, in case they have some removal. Fabled Passage. There's a Euro. So yeah, it's obviously the Sultai ramp deck, so we might be getting casualties of ward soon. Oh, they didn't hit on a fifth land, that's good. That's great to see. Now the hasty ball. And if our opponent doesn't have anything too soon, we're gonna go questing beast next turn. Risen Reef, okay, so it's Elemental's ramp deck. Finds another fabled passage. I mean we could stump it and Zerta. Yeah, maybe we should so they don't get too much value. Although nah. Let's just let's just question this. We're putting so much pressure on their life total that value really doesn't matter at this point. Alright, do they have the sixth land for casualties? Because that will be a bit annoying. Gonna crack both Fable Passages. Playing the old Ravnica Allegiance. Oh, Cavalier. That's fine, I think. Do we win? With the Amber Cleave? I think we do. So, yeah, that's a pretty good showing of how strong the curve outs with this deck are. If your opponent has no interaction, it's. Oh, hello, Vivian. And yeah, so we can Zerta with haste and the Embercleave then cost two. Another reason haste is fantastic. Synergizes with Embercleave really well. And yeah, we're happy to just put the Embercleave onto the Spellbreaker. And that's a nice quick game one. Go to the sideboard. Shifting Ceratops might be a good choice since they're playing blue. I don't, they're not going to be playing counter spells or anything, but yeah, why not? It means Euro can't block it or whatever. And then Legion Warboss is pretty good here. Clothus also to exile the Euros. Now, we probably don't need the Gem Razor. I don't think they're playing any artifacts or enchantments. Uh, the stump from the Bone Crusher might be handy though to kill the Risen Reef, so maybe we keep the Bone Crushers. And we'll just trim around the edges a little like that. Just the one cloth as I decided. Not certain on those sideboard decisions, but we'll see. Ah, the one lander. Come on. Yeah, that's much better. So we'll drop a war boss. Got a stump for the Risen Reef, which might be very handy. And we can temple on turn one. It's always nice if you don't hit the pelt collector to hit the temple on turn one and yeah I think we just take the land here to guarantee a nice curve out because we've already got a 2 and 3 drop so here comes Mr. Desertar Goblin with some haste growth spiral for our opponent they've always got the growth spiral if you ever think your opponent mightn't have the growth spiral, or you're wrong. It's always in their opening hand. Alright, there's the reef, so... I think we stunt that, because... Because we're on the draw this, this game, we're not off to as fast a start, so... Them outvaluing us is an issue, so I think getting rid of the reef is important. I don't know, maybe we should have just got the war boss down to start building an army. No. Yeah, getting rid of the reef is good, but this is going to be a tough one either way. Big old cavalier this early. Yeah, this 
Our opponent has so much mana already. If they have a casualties, we're pretty much just dead. Okay, so they're a... They're a, um, elemental combo deck, I guess. They're gonna try and mill themselves out. I've played a deck kind of similar on the channel. It's pretty cool. And yeah, I guess it's just shifting Ceratops time. Not too much we can do here. And I'm not too sure what really saves us, but at least we won game one. We can try and win game three. Is there a casualties coming or is it a big Hydra? Yeah. Big crisis. And yeah, this one's this one's not looking good. I think we just skip that up. Alright. The decider. And this is a risky keep, but I'm all about risky keeps, baby. Perk collector, go! If we if we draw lands, we're we're fine. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Get in with Peltsy. Yeah, I, sh I shouldn't have kept this hand. Didn't have a two drop. Ah, stump doesn't even kill that guy. The Leaf King Druid can block our Pelt Collector nicely now. Okay, that's a good draw. It's war boss time. Start building a little army. That's the good thing about Leaf King Druid not having any power. Is that our war boss, our war boss tokens are safe to attack. Alright, we just want to keep hitting lands from here. See if this risky, risky keep can pay off. Shock's in a Euro, not too fussed about that. So our opponent does have 5 mana with the Leafkin. We don't need a land, not the end of the world. Haste in the Spellbreaker, throw the Pell Collector, make another token and everybody attacks. That's a pretty big board for 3 mana. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge swing. So our opponent needs like a Ritual of Soot or something here. And they don't have it, so that's another, another GG. Yeah, I love this deck. I've always loved Gruul. Always been one of my favorite color combinations in Standard. So yeah, we just attack with everything here, chuck an Ember Cleave on whatever our opponent doesn't block, and it's a nice quick win. Put it on, I'm going to put it on this guy, good game, hell yeah, GG. Jumping into our second game with our Gruul aggro deck here against Odysseus the Teferi. Playing Lurus. And yeah, that's a pretty good hand. Pretty damn good. I think we'll uh, Paradise Druid turn 2 here to give us that turn 3 questing base. Yeah, save the Gallia. Oh, so it's Lyra Cycling, cool. They've got both colours. They're off to a good start. Rescuer. But we're off to a pretty good start too. Turn 3 Questing Beast is always a nice play. And the Rescuer tokens can't block the Questing Beast, which is pretty good. Now another land here would just be fantastic. If we can drop both of our hasty boys. Alright, we don't hit the land. Oh, but we've got the mana from the Paradise Druid, silly me. One of them's gonna die to the Flourishing Fox is the problem. Cycling's a pretty tough matchup. I love the cycling deck, it's so good. I'm gonna take a big risk here 
and going to activate Gali's ability when three or more creatures attack. You may discard a card at random, and if you do, draw two. So we really, really don't want to discard the Amber Cleave. Odds are in our favor. We want to discard one of these two. Take action. No! <laughs> ah, dear. Silly me. Silly, silly me. And yeah, our opponent gets some very good blocks there. Needed that Ember Cleave. Probably shouldn't have taken the risk. Odds were in our favor, but... Yeah, and then this fox is going to be big enough to block and kill questing beast here. If I can draw a land, Vivian, it's kind of helpful. <laughs> yeah, game one might just be a loss here. Yeah, I suppose we just we kill this rescuer and then get another paradise druid down. Those are some big foxies. At least the questing beast does have death touch. So can safely block the foxies. So yeah, in that case I don't think I attack. I think I hold it up as a blocker here. Cycles of fox. So yeah, Zenith Flare is going to hurt quite a lot. Not expecting to win this one, but you never know. Our opponent doesn't have the third white land, so they can't lure us into the third fox. So I guess that's a that's a bonus. <laughs> now I'd like to hit one land still. Okay. Because it would have meant we could leave one of these up as a blocker, but yeah, I think we still... We have the choice of either Bone Crusher and another Paradise Druid. Bone Crusher and a Zerta or a Vivian. Yeah! I'm a, I'm a Vivian. Go for blood. Vivian, a monster's advocate. So we'll plus one to create. I guess it doesn't matter what it has. Vigilance, sure, because it's it's probably just going to be champ blocking a fox. Answers. And no attacks again, stay up to block. And there's the flare. Yeah. Good game. Oops. What's our opponent done there? I'm not sure, they good gamed us and then accidentally cycled the Valiant Rescuer, I guess. Here's another fox. Will our opponent attack? Nope, okay, that's good. Uh, I think we stump the Lurus. Yeah, we've got to stump the Lurus before they get too much value. I think we're dead though, I think they must have another flare. And that's why they good gamed us, but try our best. Bone Crusher and plus again. And no attacks from me. So I mean, we are building quite the board, but you don't want to be having you you don't want to be going this long against cycling. The longer you stall it out, the more likely you die to a Zenith flare to the face. And I won't be too surprised if that's what happens here. Yeah, there it is. Bang! Alright. We've got this though. Clothis comes in for the graveyard hate. Rem early removal's really important in this matchup because you don't want the foxes growing, you don't want the rescue getting too much value. Same with the stinger, so. Dragonfire's great because it exiles, so. Lurus won't get value, and Ambush is also great. So I think the Ceratops comes out 
the Vivian comes out because, as I said, value doesn't matter too much. If we're going that long, they're just going to kill us with a, a Zenith Flare. Gem Razor isn't required. That's kind of lame that the two matches haven't been uh, any of the enchantment-based decks. So we haven't got to see Gem Razor, but that's okay. And then I think I'm going to go down on the Paradise Druids because we've brought in so many two drops here. We'll cut one Spellbreaker. And yeah, we'll just go three Ambush instead. Because it is quite a lot of removal. We've got the Stumps as well. Playing first. Yeah, that's a very good hand. We've got removal, we've got two and three drops. So if our opponent plays a Fox here, we're not too worried. Looking like it might be a fox. Yeah, there's the fox. We can stump that boy. Yeah. So yeah, getting rid of those foxes early is really important. Pray that that was the only payoff our opponent kept. Yep, that's great. So yeah, when you play cycling, you keep any hand that has one payoff really. So sometimes it's literally the only payoff. So if you can kill their one payoff, sometimes they're stuck doing nothing for a while and they have to cycle to find more. Obviously the Lurus can get the fox backs. Oh! Red cap melee, no! All right, that was, a, that was a great sideboard choice for our opponent. That Legion War boss would have been so great to have right now, but that's all right. I think we haste in this Spellbreaker then. Yeah, let's do that. Haste you in. Got a lot of land here. Flooding out a little bit, but just as long as we don't draw any more, I'm not too fast. So if we keep drawing threats, at least we can double spell. Next turn we can play both of these, if that's what we have to do. We're just praying our opponent doesn't... Ah. Goodness me. Okay, Clothus is a fantastic draw though. So I was just about to say we're praying our opponent doesn't get another white mana here to... to get the... the to play the Lurus and get the fox back, I can't tell properly. <laughs> so, if they do it this turn, that's a bit annoying. Please no white mana. We don't want them getting the fox back. No way! Alright, we're getting very unlucky and our opponent's getting very lucky. Oh, they missed that then. Yeah, I mean, I guess gaining life here is quite important, but I definitely would have gone for the Lurus fox before it's exiled, because now they don't get to do that. Or maybe, maybe I want to get rid of that healer so they don't gain too much life now. It's okay. Fox is scarier. But yeah, Clothus is great in this matchup, because if you can exile all their cycling cards, then the Zenith Flare isn't quite as good. Jeez, we really are flooding out though, aren't we? And we're safe to attack with the Zertar, I would assume. I think our opponent wants to keep the healer. Or maybe not. Maybe they're going to block here. Hmm, maybe I shouldn't have attacked then. There goes two Devotion Pips, yeah. Ah, that was a bit of a misplay then. For some reason I just thought they wouldn't block. Oh my goodness me, that is... That is just unfortunate. I think I kept a 3 lander. Very unlucky. And yeah, I'm not going to attack. Actually, yeah, I will. I will, I will, I will. Because I don't think they're going to block with the rescue. I think this will force them to just chump block with the token that they're going to make here. Oh, well, that's best case scenario. Taking four to the face. We're very happy about that. Yeah, I, I wish I didn't attack in with this because then... Ah! Alright, our opponent's on seven. 
Here comes Lewis and a healer, though, I would assume. This is going to be a close one. Clothus is putting in work, but this this flood is what's going to kill us. Let's see, yeah, we can exile the other one, but I've got so much life going down now. Get rid of this healer. Deal two. Questing beast still isn't quite enough. It's a great drill. Because <coughs> our opponent can't double block. Are they going to block with the Lurus? No, they're going to take it. Okay. This is, this is going to be tight. Do they have a flare? Yes, they do. Oh. It's not going our way. And there's another land, hell yeah. That's GG, folks. Just gonna gain too much life. That was just bad luck more than anything, though.